Hey guys, welcome back to another segment of The 10 Talk. As you saw a few weeks ago, I headed up to Raleigh and did a vlog that you guys can go ahead on my channel and check out. While we were up there, we were able to witness the historic overturn, override rather, of the vetoes by the governor um, because of our brave men and women and representatives up there in Raleigh. So we're beginning a series here where I'm going to talk to a few representatives, talk to a few guests regarding the overrides and what it really meant to them and what is really going on in North Carolina's government. Welcome to the 10 Talk. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us today on the 10 Talk. Here with me is Representative Jeff McNeely. Good morning. He's a representative here for us in Iredell County. He goes to Raleigh uh, as a general assemblyman, and he was up there and voted for the people when he went, around, went ahead and helped to override the veto of the governor for several key bills um, that had to do with parental rights and education that had to do with uh, transgender uh, surgeries for minors, and of course, close to my heart, fairness to women in sports. So, Jeff, how are you doing today? Keith, I'm doing well. I hope you are. <laughs> I'm Glad, doing well. I appreciate you letting me come on your uh, podcast, your show here. <laughs> of course. We're so happy to have you. So here on the show, you're able to speak for about 10 minutes if you want to, all about who you are, how you are here in Iredell County, maybe how you got into politics. Just let the people know. Uh, what you're about. Okay, well, I appreciate that. That's dangerous giving a politician <laughs> that much time. But uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, my name is Jeff McNeely. Uh, born and raised, lived here all my life in Iredell County. Uh, live out in West Iredell near Sharon Schools. I'm about as far out west as you can get. Uh, grew up in a, kind of still in West Iredell, Scotts Creek area, Scotts Creek Road area. Uh, you know, uh, Christian, husband, father. Uh, small business owner. Uh, I check a lot of boxes, I feel like. Um, I got into politics, I guess, uh, being on the Iredell County Planning Board. Uh, and uh, that gave me my fix for a little while. Uh, it would you know, take up eight, ten hours a month. We'd have meetings. You'd do a little research. You'd take some visits. And, and a lot of it had to do with zoning. But we also had a lot to do with land planning. And, and I've tried my best. Uh, I was on it, like I said, for 16 years, chairman the last couple, um, to be influential on it as far as how we go about planning the use of our land in Iredell County. Uh, that's very critical. Once you set forth your plan and you adhere to it, it's pretty much in stone. When you decide this is residential, it'll be residential pretty much from now on. When you decide you want to try to keep this agriculture, hopefully you'll keep it agriculture for a while. Uh, you know, commercial, we got to make sure we got space for it. So it was critical, I thought. And we've done a couple of different land plans that I were involved in. And, uh, and we have filled the county up the way I thought and feel like it should have been filled up. A lot of people in Moores will probably be cussing me right now because of traffic <laughs> but the idea in my opinion was was to make sure we fill the county from the bottom up yeah. and that's what we've done so we've allowed to have industry we've allowed to have high population growth but we've also kept room for agriculture in the upper and west end of it north and west and some out even in the east so we're growing it like i feel like we should uh we're not leapfrogging over here and jumping over there um and so that was rewarding, and I ran for commissioner actually in 2004 and come in fourth in the Republican primary, missed by about 450 votes, getting up third place. But I realized at that time I, I had a lot of stuff that I needed to do, and some of it was even work on myself, and I'm still working on myself. That never stops, uh, trying to be the best that I can be. I know God wants me to be. And so uh, – didn't do it for a while, waited until 2016, and then I thought it was a good time to run for county commissioner again, and I did, and I come in second. And so got a four-year term, and the Lord's always opened doors for me. And mm. I, I've stepped through most of them. I felt like, okay, Lord, this is an opportunity I see you give me. I, I think if I don't, that's a wasted blessing that's right. uh, to grow and to learn and to give and do. And so... Uh, 
I was on the commission about three years, and uh, Rena Turner decided that she was ready to step down as our North Carolina House representative. And so I threw my hat in the ring, as they say, to be appointed and got a unanimous vote uh, from our executive committee because they felt like I was the most qualified and uh, got to go to Raleigh. And then ran for it in 20 and won, uh, ran for it in 22 and won, and I'll be running again here in 24 because I feel like I'm just now getting where I know what I'm kind of doing, and and I've moved up. I'm now one of the uh, chairs on transportation in the House, and I'm also one of the two chairs on agriculture in the House, and very proud of my agriculture chair, very proud of both of them. But with agriculture, uh, I am the uh, first House Chair of Agriculture west of Raleigh in over 70 years. Wow. So a lot, of, a lot of the eastern part of the state has done the policy and whatnot for North Carolina agriculture, and, and there's a lot down there, but we have a lot of agriculture going on up this way. We're more livestock. They're more row crop and, and hogs, and we're more cattle and, and chicken. And so uh, it's a very diverse state, and Iowa County is a very diverse county. One thing I, I think is really unique in it, I, I don't know of another county that I think falls into this category. We are 14th, 13th or 14th in population, but we are number 10 out of 100 counties in gross agricultural farm receipts. And that's... A unique yeah. blend. Ever the, all the other nine below us are all less than about 50,000 people. A lot of land, not a lot of people. That makes for easier farming. We are very populated here at over 180,000 yeah. and still are able to do the agriculture we're doing. So we're doing stuff on this side of the state, folks. Awesome. We really are, in case anybody down these hears. But I work. I, I believe in agriculture all over the state yes. and work for it. So... Um, I run, and, and the reason is I run GNM Milling, and we're a family-owned uh, feed business. My mother and father started it. My mom, 92, still my secretary, shows up pretty much about every day. If she don't, we're wondering what's up. Uh, so she's, she wants to see what's I always say she has the original uh, case of FOMO, afraid of missing out. So she wants to make sure she's still involved. Aww. And uh, and, and love to have her there. I told her she, she can stay there as long as she wants to find <laughs> that desk. It's up to her. So... Um, but uh, parents started that in 1957. I worked in it since as soon as I can remember, pushing a broom or something, uh, and graduated from NC State in 86, come back, was blessed to find a good woman and marry her, Cindy Carter uh, McNeely. And so we've been married since 92. And wow. two kids, and uh, Jacob and Madeline. And Jacob, he helps uh, run the mill now. So he's third generation. And uh, that allows me to go down and play politics. My daughter, she's down in Charlotte. She's got a good job. She seems to be doing well. So the Lord has blessed me. Amen. The Lord has blessed me, and uh, and I hope I can return that blessing to others through the work I do in the house. Uh, never really served in the military at the time when I got of age. The only thing I think we had done is uh, invade Grenada, and they were uh, – Downsizing the military, actually, uh, but I love my country and would have if they needed me to serve, but Amen. at that time didn't. So uh, this is my service. This is where I, I believe I'm, I'm doing my service for my country and for my state and my community. Uh, love Iredell County. Uh, actually, part of my family, but two, two out of the four sides, if you look at your grandparents, how it works. Both of them had uh, land grants, the, the Sherls. Uh, Adam Sherl, Sherl's Ford, is on one side of my branch of my family. The wow. Morrison family goes back to a land grant. These are 1740. So I've uh, been in Arnold County for a long, long time, deep, deep roots, and uh, and love my county and want to see it prosper. And that's pretty much the story of Jeff McNeely, I guess. <laughs> that is uh, awesome. <laughs> that is so great. So um, my ears did perk up a little bit with you being the chair um of agriculture now and, and saying that you are the first one uh, in 70 years, correct? Yep. In the, in the, in the, from from, from the, the west. western side of the state, west of Raleigh. Wow. So what difference do you think this is really going to make now regarding? Well, so they're going to see more of 
the western side or I, I, I think what you'll see be? is and and we've done this and, and and I work with Jimmy Dixon's the other chair okay. and Jimmy Jimmy's the senior chair and I'll let him be that because he's been there and he's a, a wise man and so me and him work together though and we try to craft policy that that works for the whole state and, and my, my job is to do that yeah. and, and it's also to make sure that Policy don't get shifted one way or another. Now. Right. And I'm not saying it did, but I'm just saying it's funny that nobody's from the western side of the state has been a chair on ag in the house. And so uh, it's good. It's a real good thing. Okay. And and that's why one of the reasons I want to stay and continue, uh, I've got work to do to help agriculture all over this whole state from Murphy to Manio. And, um, and so I, I look forward to trying to do good policy, good work. Uh, just to make agriculture it's the number one industry in, in the state. In the state, yes. Uh, number one industry in our county. And so, uh, you know, we've got to make sure that it survives. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but if you can look at me through the TV screen there, you can see I like to eat. And so I'm, I've got to make sure I keep agriculture going or I'll starve to death. Oh, no. Well, it's obviously very important now um, in this time of our country to have agriculture going. We see food shortages all over the world right now. It, it, you know, believe it or not, it's just as important as nuclear weapons or anything else. It's national security. If you can't, yes. if you cannot feed yourself, your people, then you're in trouble. Right. You're in trouble. And uh, luckily, America's always been blessed to be able to feed itself abundantly and uh, send food all over the world. I always think it's a shame that we have people going hungry in the United States with as much as with as much as we have. Yes. So, uh, and we try to do better, but you know, it's still it's there, it's there. But uh, so uh, we're just blessed in that in, uh, in many ways. And so I, I think agriculture uh, is uh, so important. We grow a lot of different industries, and we seem to quit maybe thinking about the girl that we brought to the dance, which agriculture is what got North Carolina where it is today. Well, so I just try to remind them all, you know, this this, this is the number one industry still. Right. And we need to make sure we keep it growing. Uh, we we actually crossed over the uh, $1 billion mark uh, this year in, in agriculture-related sales, and that was wow. huge. That was, that was huge for us. So uh, a lot of things going on in North Carolina, a lot of good things going on in North Carolina agriculture. Probably the safest food you'll ever eat anywhere in the world. I don't care what the commercials and the people tell you. So, All right. buy and see. <laughs> Amen. So, with the good things going on here in North Carolina, we know other good things that happened a few weeks ago with yes, the overrides of the uh, vetoes, the vetoes by the governor. So, we want to continue to celebrate that here um, on this show, as I did go up there to Raleigh to see you guys and witness that historic overturn. Um, it was awesome. So for you personally, um, for those overrides, what did it mean to you to have that, to get that done? You know, it's kind of funny uh, when you're in the moment, you don't even realize the, the significance sometimes of how large a stage this is and how important it is. But, uh, you know, it's almost like I hit the button and then I realized that we actually did this. We actually got these laws going forward. And th this is not our first time. Right. We had some here about uh, probably a month, month and a half ago, and, and that was the first successful governor veto override I had ever been involved in. And uh, it was just, uh, I, I don't know how to tell you, it's just really cool, y'all. It's just really cool uh, to know that, that the policies that you work on, because we start in January, but it, it starts way before that. You know, I, I've got, I finally got a bill through this is my third time. You know, I'm basically in my third session, and each time I've got been there, I've ran this bill, and it's the Second Amendment bill, very strong on the Second Amendment, uh, and uh, it allows you to be able to carry firearms during your worship service on Sunday if you have a school that happens to be part of your church. And so got that through. Uh, that was an override we did. That was great because, I mean, that just felt like I had finally uh, crossed the finish line with this bill when you run it three times and get it vetoed twice and watch it die. And so, you know, you work hard and you work long. And then to watch somebody, I mean, why he vetoed his answers, 
They're pitiful little answers. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna veto something, yeah, g- give me really, an answer. Unconstitutional, right. something, something, something. Don't of give substance, me, yeah, yeah. Don't 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 give me. Well, it looks like it may rain outside, so I'm gonna veto this bill. That was about how much sense most of his explanations for veto made, because uh, these are common sense bills. Yes, they're they're not. There's nothing really crazy about it. They're good policy. They're they're right policy. They're moral policy. Uh, I mean, they're biblical policy. Exactly. You know, some of them. So uh, to me, uh, like I said, it's what needed to be done. So, I, you know, like I said, I was chomping at the bit, ready to hit the button and get on with it. I wish we could have done them all at one time. I know. Well, yeah, that would have been <laughs> that pretty awesome. That would have been awesome. much fun, uh, fanfare and fun, though. But uh, I'm not sure how the other side would have felt about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and know this, uh, right now, you know, the, uh, the temperature's pretty high. Uh, because, like I said, we pretty much uh, just don't say rubbed it in their face. Excuse me, rubbed it in their face, and uh, we understand that. I, I I I get where they're coming from. I don't agree, but I mean, you know, I respect they're 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 doing a job just like I am. They're wanting different results most of the time, but I, I still respect and and try to show that respect as much as I can, much as I know how. And uh, and d- don't, there's nobody on the other side I have animosity or hatred to or anything. I just don't agree with what they're wanting to do. Well, what I found very interesting um, when we were in the General Assembly side and even when I went over to the Senate side, specifically regarding the women in sports bill, it was two women that stood up against the veto. I just, I was appalled. Well, I didn't understand the whole thing. What is your take on well, that? Well, I mean, we had we had one of the our, our lady representatives, uh, as a Democrat, get up and tell us how she was an Olympic swimmer and went to the seventy two games. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the East Berlin women uh, were all on steroids and beat them like a drum, and that's cheating. I mean that what that did that made that woman that much closer to becoming a man by taking these steroids, right? And, and somehow or another in her mind she was good with that, and she said, "Well, the, the real thing was I was able to compete." Well, I don't know about y'all. I, competing is wonderful. I'm not going to knock it one bit, but there's a reason there's a winner and a loser. Right. And to work as long as she probably did, I bet you she trained for years to become that good a swimmer, to be on the United States Olympic swimming team, and then to go and to know the other side cheated somehow or another or had an advantage that they shouldn't have had and won, I would find that really hard to stomach. But yet she was for having transgender men in women's sports. What's the difference in that being a steroid? They have more testosterone in their body than the women do. I don't care if they are transing. So, hey, if you want to be a trans, that's fine. That is you. You do you. We don't have to participate with you. We don't have to tell you it's right. We don't have to do any of that. Right. That's you. Don't make me think that what you're doing is right if I don't believe it's right. And that's what they want, and that's not what we're going to do. You want to do you, that's fine. Don't think there's not going to be consequences with it, and don't think there's gonna, not going to be issues because of it because we don't necessarily believe in what you're doing. Right. America allows you freedom, but with re- with freedom comes responsibilities yeah. and comes consequences sometimes. Yeah, and I believe certain restraints as well, specifically when it comes to the transgender um, bill with the surgeries for minors. Yeah. Uh, that is just so appalling that we even have to make a bill in North Carolina to say that you cannot do this to children. I, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm listening to one of the other side. The guy gets up, the representative does, and tells us he's got an eight-year-old grandson that likes to wear his, his sister's clothes and play with her dolls. Okay. okay. That That's... doesn't mean that child wants to have some kind of selective surgery or wants to be given puberty blockers, whatever. You know what? 
take those toys away from him, give him other right. toys, see if he likes playing with them. Exactly. Who knows? Who knows? He can't consent to alcohol. He can't consent to, to cigarettes. cigarettes and uh, all that. How in the world you know? can he consent yeah. to having that done to his own body? That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I, and, and he got up and said, we're going to do everything we can to help him transition. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. He's eight. He's eight years old. He doesn't even know what kind of ice cream he really likes yet. And so uh, it, it it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, Lord help him. That's yes. all I know to say. Yes. Please, Lord, protect those children. That is exactly. Well, mm-hmm. again, I believe this is a step in the right direction with well, this is. kind of law being put in place here in North Carolina. And, and, it's and a precedent. What A lot of things, what they don't realize is you only hear the sound bites from the left. And, of course, they own the media and they own the Internet. And thank God we got conservatives that are so on the Internet, So letters to the too. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was and, born. And all they talks about, this, oh, how cruel this, that, and other. We have stuff in that bill for mental health for these children so right. that they can get it. Because exactly. to me, this all goes back to a mental health issue in my opinion. And they need to make sure that they understand what they're doing, what their what their problem is, and yeah. let's see if there's a mental health issue underneath all this. Yeah. And so uh, so there's there's a, there's good in the bill. Not only good for us, but good for that side too exactly. to help these kids get the mental health they need, mental help. Right. And when it comes to our children, specifically with the again, the parental uh, rights and education bill, how are you going to tell me I can't know that my daughter wants to change her pronouns? You you're not allowed to tell me my daughter wants to go to school and you're allowing her to transition and do I, no, that is not your right at all. That is not what yeah. she's going to school for at all. Parents, <laughs> parents need to know everything about their child while they're away from them at school. Everything the teacher can tell them, health-wise, whatever. You know, we have laws about child abuse and, exactly. and, and, and these things. If, if, you're, if the teacher's afraid that something's going to happen to that child they tell, right. well, you know what, then, then call the sheriff's office there and the parent both so exactly. you can get ready. But that parent needs to know. And so I, it, it's, I don't know, it, it's crazy. Uh, I, I think we have a wonderful school system here in yes. Iowa County. We are blessed with our social schools, and we are blessed with Mooresville graded schools, and we are blessed with really good charter schools and really good private schools. And I know the women and men that teach in them and work in them, and they love children and they want the best for them. So that we are blessed. Some other places, I don't know if they're as blessed. And, and there's no need for agendas in schools. There's need for education. There's need to be taught morality to a point. Uh, as far as we know, stealing, killing, all that's bad, no matter what religion you believe exactly. or if you believe no religion. So, you know, we got to uphold our laws of land. So that's where it stops, though. That's where it stops. When it comes to trying to decide gender identity issues or all these other things, that is where the family starts. Exactly. And let that be who controls that. And then the old saying, if that child grows up and they're messed up, well, it wasn't the school system that did it. It was the family. We have to stay neutral at the school, protect the child best you can, but it's still the parents that are in charge, and they're the ones that need to raise that child how they see fit. Exactly. God gave them that charge. Yes, I 100% agree with that. And again, I thank you for your bravery and the things that you're saying and what you stand for while you're up there in Raleigh. I know that it's not easy for you guys. Sometimes. <laughs> As being um, somebody who's also a part of Moms for Liberty, we went to Philadelphia uh, a few months ago, and we were met by some very interesting people. I'm sure. The that's, entire weekend. Uh, there's, some were, ha- there's some haters. There's some haters. Who were kind of paid to surround the hotel for the whole weekend. Yeah. Uh, so it was interesting trying to get in and out. Um, thank God for security and the Philadelphia police. But that being said, when I went out to Raleigh, we were also met with that kind of climate as well. So I know that's something that you all uh, have to deal with on a daily basis. Why don't you tell the people a little bit more of what yeah, that's about? Yeah, I mean, it... You know, after the overrides, I go back to the office. The phone rings off the hook, and it's people just using some of the most foul language that you can. Wow, think not of. even people from your side no, to no, celebrate with you. No, it's it's it, it, and most of them are from out of state. Wow, most of the calls we get, I'd say seventy five percent of the calls we get are from out of state. That's so. Uh, you know, they're they're watching the internet and they're doing this, and there's somebody saying, "Hey, North Carolina, this passed this. You need to call this this people, that people." And they give a list, and I think they go down. 
down the list. I evidently got nothing better in life to do and call. I remember one lady, she called, and she was, oh, it was just trash, just pure filth was coming out of her mouth. Oh, and I said, uh, I could tell she was older. And I said, do you, do you have grandchildren? And she goes, yes, I do. And I said, do you kiss them with that mouth? <laughs> wow. I mean, it was just vulgar. Wow. And, and to have a 68-year-old woman say all those things to you, I'm just thinking, how godless. How godless. And that's the problem in our country, Lakeitha, right now. Evidently, people think, well, these people ran for office, so I can treat them and say anything I want to them. And, folks, that's not the way our democracy, our republic was set up. I'm sorry. Uh, we work. We work very economical. Very economical, $14,000 a year I get paid to go to Raleigh, but I don't do it for the money. I do it because I feel like it's a service I need to give to my state, county, country. Yes. Uh, it's, it, it's been good to me. I owe something back. But I or any of the rest of us do not deserve the, the belittling, the uh, the vulgarity, uh, just the just the whole nine, just the violence. It's, it's just exactly the violence. that. It's violence. It's just verbal violence. It's violence spewed on us. Yeah. I mean, I, the emails you get, just crazy. Uh, one of ours, I said a little bit to you earlier, uh, Trisha Cotham. Yes, we were talking about uh, her. She, she changed from Democrat to Republican. That gave us our veto proof. Without her, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know if any of this would have got done, overriding these vetoes, so I'm thankful for her. But with that, her family has been uh, ran off the road, uh, accosted in grocery stores, people ramming their grocery cart into their grocery cart, cussing them right in front of her children who were like 13, I think, and nine or eight or nine. Uh, just there's no call for this. There's no place for this in this country. Trying to bully politicians, trying to threaten politicians. To me, that ought to be a, some lower level, but a felony. Yeah. Uh, uh, we got to get our, our mind worked around that this is not thuggery that you can, like the mafia or whoever, get your way by, by threatening to put a horse head in a bed or whatever uh, else. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Well, you think about, you know, not that you're a police officer, but if you, you know, do something to a police officer, you know, you're going to jail. Yeah, there's you're a higher level. You're an elected official. Yeah. It is definitely of that caliber, if not a little higher. Well, so there's, I believe there should be some sort of protections in place. Maybe and, you and got, a, got a bill going right here. Yeah, I think eventually <laughs> you'll, you'll see legislation come yeah. out to, to take care of this because it's, it's a problem. ridiculous. I mean, when you go to people's houses. That's you know, so crazy. And I've said all along, folks, I tell you what, I'm in Raleigh. You come to my house. That's private property. We're going we're to have Amendment a talk number when four. I get back. <laughs> I mean, that's the Fourth Amendment. I'm just, I'm just old country boy. We're going to have a talk. <laughs> yeah, I suggest you stay away. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I just there's no so, call for that. But, you know, here this threat level. I'm sure there's a lot of ladies out there that would say, well, I'd like to run the office and could and run for office and could do a great job and have abilities. Right. They may be right. afraid that somebody's going to do something to their children. I'm afraid of mine, too, but mine are grown now. But, I mean, there's a lot of things bring in where you, you keep people from being able to run. You took away a freedom. You took away a freedom, and it happens daily. And, and, and there's craziness on the left and craziness on the right, too, folks. I'm not going to – all those people out there on the fringe – Calm down, quieten down, sit down, you know, be a, be a good citizen, be an American. <laughs> what is it like to be an American at this point? Like, uh, it's, it's a crazy time that we're definitely living in. I never, I mean, I'm only 34. So all the things that I've even witnessed up until this point, what a time to be alive, for sure. I mean, you know, we're blessed. We're blessed, and I, I really think we take it all for granted. granted we really do. I mean, we're. In a, I've been to foreign countries, and you know it. The corruption, the the things you see and do, you wonder. I, I get people wanting to cross the southern border. Nobody I, is hopping off of the border of America and riding on a raft to Cuba. Exactly, I mean. or, or or going back across the Rio Grande. <laughs> I mean, we're not we're not heading to Mexico. They're heading here, right. and, and I get it. We still have to have legalized immigration, though. We can't just have craziness like we do down there. Right. But, I mean, we're in a, 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 a great nation still. I feel like it's, it's not what it could be or not where it's been, but it's still a great nation. And, and we're going to have to work together. Uh, I, I, the media, I, I watch it all the time, tries yeah. to drive the wedge between all of us. 
I think at the end of the day, we're not that different. We want to provide for our family. We exactly. want safe environment for us and our children to grow up in. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they could leave like I did when I was a kid on a bicycle and I'd be gone all day during the summer and come home at dark. And okay. my mom said, where have you been? She knew no way to get up with me, know where I was at, and didn't worry. I don't think a bit about me. Would you do that now? No. No. So why, how, what do we got to do to get back? to that level uh, of, of security, to that level of freedom. Uh, so I don't know. It's going to take some work, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to take all of us realizing that there's evil people out there, and we need to make sure that we identify the evil people and remove them from our society in yeah. whatever way. Well, that's a good segue to my next question. You know, with the overrides that did happen in the General Assembly and both and the Senate as well, um, especially in this climate now where we're getting ready to go into an election season, what do you think the direction is now for North Carolina with how we you all did work together to, you know, override the governor's vetoes and how, what North Carolina really does stand for? I believe North Carolina is a red state. Uh, I believe it's a red state. Uh, I, I will say this. Uh, uh, Roy Cooper started out at one place in his governorship and has ended at a completely different place in his governorship. Sad. And and, and that's brought about a lot. He, he has played to the f- extremist in his party, to the far left. And I think any time you do that, and, and I'll even say some, I watched Donald Trump do that to the extreme right. Mm. And I think any time you do that, there there's there's a threat to democracy. There's a threat to our republic that we live in. And uh, that's where the hostilities have come. We've allowed that, that, that crazy fraction of whichever side to grow and grow and grow. And with them, there is no compromise of government is either this way or no way. So coming well, more center. Yeah, I, I mean. you know, and, and I'm a conservative. Right. And there's things I'm not going to give on. There's things I'm not, but I'm willing to listen and I'm willing to understand the issue and try to find us a place where we can move forward right. with something positive. If we can't, then we won't make a law at all. We got plenty of laws. We don't really need a whole lot more, if any at all. We just need to understand and enforce the laws we have. We'll be fine if we do that. Unfortunately, we have judges making interpretations of the laws that we have, and then we have to go and make new laws to offset how one judge decided, right. one person interprets it. Uh, Lakeitha, one thing I know we've done over the last two sessions I think is crazy. We have gone back and changed in a lot of different s- laws and statutes where it says must to shall. Wow. Just but, one word. Because somehow or another, somebody has figured out that must, uh, a judge somewhere said must means maybe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so oh, I don't know how you I don't I don't know how you interpret that, but that's what they've done. And so now we've had to go back in and put shall. And I'm sure somebody's gonna say, Well, shall means I don't know, you could probably you probably ought to do it, but you don't have to. So I don't know what we're gonna do next. I guess right. we're gonna say, Dang it, <laughs> you, <laughs> you gotta do it. So, you know. Uh, crazy. Right, that's again. What we, that's what we've done. We've we're done that. I bet you we've done that on probably a, a dozen more bills. Had to put shall in instead of must. Well, again, you know, so in this climate, we're also seeing the threat of uh, the COVID game coming back. And it's, and, and, and they know how to work that game. Yeah, so they so. said, hey, that's, you know, a lot of times the sequel's just as good as the original. <laughs> <laughs> or better, maybe. So they're, they're, that's, they know how to play that game. They they got it down pat. They did a really good job in that last election using COVID as their, their cover. And so I'm sure they're going to figure out some way to bring it back or do whatever they can. Uh, we did pass a, an election bill here the other day. Of course, he vetoed it. And we yes. will go back in and override it. And it's a very, very good bill. It's a very, very fair bill. It's a very transparent bill. Right. That's why they didn't like it. And so we'll go back and get that done, and and that will help with a lot. One of the main things that I liked in it is at 7.30 on the Tuesday, the final day of whether it be the primary or whether it be the election, that's it. If your ballot isn't in, it's done. You got 45 days to request a ballot and get it back in. That's plenty of time, folks. Get it early, get it back in. 
there won't be any issues. But if you wait till the last second or two, you may not get your vote counted. And I'm sorry. But the problem's been is they go from early election. Yeah, all the way 10 days after. Yeah, we got early. But they go and look at early voting and see who hadn't showed up for early voting. And they start trying to figure out ways to get ballots to these people or get ballots harvested from whoever, however, to flood it back in. And they barely get them back in by Election Day. And then it takes, you know, th- th- once it's put in the mailbox, if you get that right stamp on posted it, date, yeah, posted, date, posted on it, date on it, then we were taking them nine days yep, after. Ex- yeah, well, I couldn't I believe what, it I, you know, in you 2022. Can, you can go a long way in nine exactly. days. You know, you can go a long way. So. And then you have to be up there in Raleigh, like, on the day to contest if it's that. And it's yeah. like, this is a whole rigmarole well, right and, here. And, you know, like I said, we got it where every ballot can be watched by both sides. Hey, right. that's fair. Watch them. I agree with that. You know, we had, they didn't like that. I'm like, okay, there's a reason you don't like these things. Obviously, this is messing up your plan. So a lot of good things in there. We're going to get that overrode, and, and I, I'm I'm ready to put all those things in place. Nice. So, so you we'll, seem like you're feeling good about the direction North Carolina is taking. I feel real taken. good. I feel real good. We we've been able with the overrides. We've been able to get legislation that we've been trying to do for the last six years wow. done, done, and so uh, and so it's come to fruition. And, and awesome. you know, when you work that hard and that long, you like to see something you get accomplished done, and we're getting it now. So hopefully so, the budget is next. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And the budget should have done been done. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. It should have. Yep. Uh, the good news is state workers, teachers, all y'all, whenever the budget's signed, it will be retroactive back to July the 1st. So you'll what raises you get, you'll see a pretty good size little check come, uh, or it'll be – attached to your check to make up for the raise that you did not get during these last couple months. So that money's not lost. It's just not with you. Uh, so that's coming. But uh, I feel good about the budget. It's, it's, it's a pretty good size budget, uh, but it's got a lot of good things in it. It's going to help move North Carolina forward, and especially Iredell County. Uh, I don't know what all we're going to get. It's kind of like Christmas. Uh, to a point, you, you go look under the tree and see what you got. But we got about fifty million dollars worth of requests in, and 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 when I say we, I, we work as a team, and that's been our best way to do this. It's me and uh, uh, Gray Mills and Mitchell Setzer. Mitchell has a couple of precincts in Iredell, and the House, and then Vicky Sawyer in the Senate, and we all work as a team, and we submit our stuff as a block, all at one time on both sides, House and Senate. And with that, we feel like we're very successful. And last time, we got about $62 million directly to Iredell County. And we got close to 80-some, I think it was 83 or $4 million directly, indirectly. So total out about 80-some million bucks wow. that affected Iredell County. And and we've and I'm not talking bad about anybody for because all of them have been good representatives. We just happen to be at the right place at the right time. But we have never gotten anywhere close to that kind of money for Iredell County okay. ever, ever. <laughs> well, those sounds like really awesome accomplishments, Jeff. Well, I, I, you know, I, I I try to stay even keel, but I am proud. I am proud of the work that we as a, a team yes. have done. Everybody's got their part. Uh, of all four of us and uh, we've worked great together and uh, we just go about it uh, yeoman like and, and just keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and and uh, and we've been very successful and so with that I am proud of the effort we put forth and, and, and that's one of the reasons that make me want to get back down there because I see more opportunities for things that we can do in Iredell County and uh, uh, I think we're the I think we're the best county out of all 100. Maybe I'm a little prejudiced. A little biased. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's a beautiful place to live, and I think uh, we have good, uh, we have great schools. Uh, we have a willing workforce. Uh, also, uh, you know, we're very secure here. We have a good sheriff's office, police officers uh, all around us, and uh, we have good health care. I hate losing Davis like we did, but we yeah. still have good health care. So we have a lot of things that we should be thankful for that we have and blessed. And to me, that makes us the uh, the number one county in the whole state, in my opinion. Well, I think one last question would be, what can we as constituents here in Iredell County do to help you up there in Raleigh? 
would it be better for us to come up there more often? We'd call love to have you, you. Email. Uh, you know, uh, all the above. Just let us know what uh, what means the most to you. Uh, my job is not to go and do what Jeff McNeely wants to do. My job is to go and do what Iredell County wants. And so I feel like I have a pretty good pulse on Iredell County. I try to stay active and evolved, uh, involved. I need to evolve, but involved <laughs> in the county and, and the community and when I'm home. Uh, and so uh, just let us know what you're thinking, what you like, what you don't like. And, uh, you know, without that, we're not sure always how to go on some issues. Uh, I always try to go biblical first, and then right. I go con- I go constituent next, and then I go caucus party, whatever you want to call it, next. And so we're always about Iredell County. So let us know. And, and we do read the emails. We do listen to the phone calls, whether you know voicemails or whatever. Um, I'm very accessible, not hard to get up with, 704-902-4958. That's a crazy politician. I'll give you a sale. <laughs> crazy. But I, you want to talk to me? That's my job. I try to help people all I can, and I feel like I've been very responsive to uh, constituent issues and have helped a lot of people. And, uh, you know, if you don't like helping people, don't do this. Don't do this. But if you do, it's very rewarding. And I, I've, I've felt very blessed to help people in their toughest times. Well, we want to thank you for all of your efforts up there in Raleigh and for representing us well. Thank you, ma'am. And for being a big part of the overrides. Um, and it's really close to my heart, all three of those bills. They yeah. they meant a Me lot. Too. And it was awesome to, to see that and be up there to witness that. And uh, thank you so much for coming on today well, thank and you, discussing ma'am. all this with me. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, uh, uh, we got a, we've done a lot of good work. More yeah. to do, folks. More yes. to do. We're not done yet. Well, good luck in all your campaigning coming up. And well, thank uh, you. we continue to pray for great success. All right. I appreciate y'all. Thank all you. right, guys. So until next time, this is the 10 Cock on Letters of the People. I'm Lakeitha Bobbish, a voice for We the People. We'll see you next time.